Good day everyone and welcome to today's video on combinations of transformations. Yes, it's a continuation of the videos I've done previously and if you haven't already watched them, please consider going back. There's one on translations, one on dilations and one on reflections. Why is that important? Well, basically I'm going to put all of those together now and combine them with the algebra and oh, the, the excitement is going to be way too much. Before I start, if you're new to my channel, hi, welcome. Thank you so much uh, for discovering me. Um, if you can do me the honor of please clicking that red arrow over there and show me that uh, you're supporting my channel, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. And click the little bell for notifications. Um, without subscribers, I feel like I'm sitting in a room here doing this on my own. Greatly appreciated if you can do that. What are we doing? Well, as is normal, here's a little bit of learning above. Um, obviously, we're going to combine the transformations we've been working on before. So rather than just dealing with translations and dilations and reflections, we're going to deal with all of them at the same time or a combination of. Now, one of the things we haven't had to worry about, as I say here, zooming in just a little bit, is the order in which to apply those transformations. And there is a trick to this. If a question defines the order, you must do them in that order. So if a question says to dilate, then reflect, then translate, you do it in that order. If it doesn't give you an order and you're trying to work them out, we'll be coming to that in a sort of uh, later video, you have to do them in the order. And as I say here, there is a helpful little word or uh, rearrangement of those letters called Dr. T. Now, obviously, those of you who are huge A-team lovers will know that Mr. T was the very large, burly uh, black gentleman who was scared of flying, I believe, and uh, was covered in gold. Um, legendary TV series, if you haven't already watched it. Um, but yeah, Dr. T is the order you're going to do it. And at the end of this video, there is a graphical suggestion uh, to show you how, if you don't do the order the right way, it can actually give you very different graphs. So uh, here's do some shortcut. Now, I get really nervous with shortcuts. Um, I say this all the time. If you're going to use a shortcut, you really do need to understand where it's come from to be able to apply it correctly. Otherwise, you blindly... Um, you blindly just apply shortcuts and hope. It's a bit of a scattergun effect. And sometimes, maybe many times it will work. But in an exam, they're not hoping to see whether you've sort of learned stuff. They actually want to know whether you have learned it and understood it. And I think there's a huge difference between learning and understanding. Right? So you can regurgitate. But does it actually mean anything? Not if you don't understand it. So here, from previous videos, we have the idea that translations dilations and reflections have a number of stages that you can do extracting information from the question and banging it straight into the um, equation your base equation but i'll come back to that in a moment let's actually get on with some examples because examples are the nectar of life uh, apparently find the equation of the image of y equals x squared so first things first we've got this y is equal to x squared now i think of that as my base graph that's where i'm starting from and i'm trying to get to under a dilation of factor two from the x-axis. So factor two from the x-axis, quick arrow, followed by a translation three units in the positive direction of the x-axis. Uh, so not the next, don't put next there, put a three. And four units in the negative direction of the y-axis. So there we go, four units. Now obviously you can see there I put the times two, that tells me it's a dilation. When I've got the three and the four, I just know that's shorthand for a translation. Right, so we're gonna do the algebra. And if you remember that for a standard point, we have a coordinate of x comma y. So we're now gonna do things and build up my final coordinate. Imagine I was just doing it with one ordered pair. So my ordered pair has x comma y, I'm now going to do them in the order they've given to me, and I am going to times, I'm going to dilate away from the x-axis, which means my y values double. So my x values stay the same, and my y values double. So that's that one done. Then I'm going to move my whole graph three units to the right, so in the positive direction. So that's going to change my x values. So that's going to become x plus 3 and that stays as 2y because it doesn't change the 2y. And then finally, I'm going to do my four units down. Well, that is going to change my y value. And so I'm going to end up with x plus 3 comma 2y minus 4. So what is that? Well, that's the image now. So taking each of my ordered pairs, that now would describe the image. And we know that the image is given by x dashed and y dashed. 
Why is that important to me? Because I'm now going to equate these. Why? Well, if you've watched the previous videos, you'll probably understand. But we now know that x dashed is equal to x plus 3. And we know that y dashed is given by 2y minus 4. Well, why is this important to me? Well, my original equation was given in terms of x and y. So we had y was equal to x squared. Well, we don't want that now. I want my equation to be in terms of x dashed and y dashed. So I've got to find a way of getting rid of the x and y and substituting in the x dashed and y dashed. And oh, hold on a moment, we've got that here. So scrolling up a little bit, uh, let me see. So I now know I can say that x is equal to x dashed minus three, and I know that y dashed plus four is gonna give me two y. And so y is gonna be y dashed plus four all on two. Right, okay, so knowing that, I substitute back into my original equation. So that now becomes y dashed plus four all on two is equal to, and where I see an x, I'm gonna replace it with x dashed minus three. And remember now that's all gonna be in brackets and squared. And I'm just gonna rearrange it. Now, because I've got x dashed and y dashed in my equation, and this is now the equation of my image, I don't need the dashes anymore. I can rearrange them or rewrite it without the dashes in it. That's what I did in previous videos. But actually, I'm just going to mentally skip them. And from this stage forward, I'm going to just write them as x and y. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this divide by 2, because I won't be able to access that plus 4. So y dashed plus 4 becomes equal to 2 lots of x minus 3 all squared. And then take away 4 from both sides. Oops, I told you I was going to not do that dashed y was equal to 2, x minus 3 squared minus 4. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Now, again, possibly we could have done that a lot, lot quicker. But the algebra, I actually quite like. It's systematic. It's formulaic. It works. Um, one thing to notice, if you will, it is this value here, this pronumeral in front of that x. We like, in all cases, where we are doing dilations, transformations, and reflections. Sorry, dilations, reflections, and... Uh, translations, uh, to make sure that the coefficient of that x is always 1. That is a huge trick that's coming up in a slightly later video. But uh, just where you can, try and make sure that, that coefficient of 1, even if you have to do some algebraic manipulation, it's going to pay off in the end, I promise you. And so there's my solution using algebra. Now let's try it using shortcuts, okay? A dilation. So we started off with y was equal to x squared. So a dilation of factor 2 from the x-axis. So dilation of factor 2 from the x-axis. We know that for the shortcut, when we are dilating factor 2, we're replacing y with y on that dilation. So I'm now going to replace y with y on 2. Becomes equal to 2x squared. Simplifying this is now going to give me y was equal to 2x squared. Right, that's the first one. Then it says, followed by a translation of three units in the positive direction of the x-axis, we know that when we do that, we're replacing x with x minus h, or k, I can't remember which letter it was, um, where k or h, or whatever letter it is, is the positive value. So in that situation, I'm now going to replace x with x minus 3. So there we go. So y is equal to 2, where I see an x. I replace it with x minus 3, and there's my squared. So that's that one. And then what is it? Uh, negative direction of the y-axis, 4 units in the negative direction. Uh, so I replace a y with y minus the positive move. So that's y minus minus 4, which is y plus 4. So that becomes y plus 4 is equal to 2, x minus 3 or squared. And then therefore y is equal to 2 lots of x minus 3 all squared minus 4. Is that what I got before? Did I get two lots of x minus 3 all squared minus 4? I did. Now the shortcuts are great if you remember them. Over here in Australia you're allowed to use summary books, but in one of your exams. Uh, the other one, you're just going to have to remember it, which makes summary books a bit of a waste of time, really, in my own personal opinion. But anyway, so there we go. That was using uh, shortcuts. Now there's also the uh, graphical means. And a lot of this uh, depends on whether you understand how to shift graphs and how to move things and what happens. Now, a lot of this was done in year 10. A lot of it was around quadratic. So if we had y was equal to x squared and we then ended up with y was equal to x minus 2 all squared, we knew that we could then draw that graph because we knew that the squared graph was just moved 2 to the right. We knew where the minimum of the uh, parabola was and so life was good. And that's very much what it's going to do here. 
One of the key points in methods, and I cannot stress this enough, and probably for all subjects around the world, is where you sketch graphs, there are absolute minimum things you have to label. Now, in many cases, the question will say to you to label all key points. Now, as this course progresses, that actually sort of changes. At this moment in time, we don't really have, for many of the graphs, the ability to find out what maximums and minimums are. So for the start of this textbook, we tend to just put them to one side and just use the knowledge we have if it's a parabola, blah, blah, blah. But later on, we'll actually show you ways of finding the maximum and minimum. Right, so uh, we had the graphical means. We knew the graph was y equals x squared. So when I do these questions, I build it up in, in case of graphs. So here is my y and here is my x. Now, because I'm sketching, Initially, I don't really care about being too specific about what points are on my graph. As I build it up to my final graph, my final graph must have all the information on that I need. So I'm going to just delete this over here because it's not really needed and it's probably going to be in my way. So the first thing is, here is my graph of y equals x squared. What information do I know? Well, I know that that crosses through the origin at 0, 0. Really important, that vertex, that minimum, really, really important for me to know. So we're going to dilate a factor 2 from the x-axis. Now, when we have a dilation, we actually need to show the examiner that that has actually been dilated. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put another point on. And it's great how many graphs have 1, 1 as one of the key points. So then I'm going to now draw a very quick sketch and say, right, well, I now know that that's going to actually get narrower. Do you have to show that in a methods exam? Do you have to show that it's an area? Absolutely, yes. The, the, the examiners are looking for that type of stuff. Now, obviously, if it's a dilation away from the x-axis, that stays a 0, 0. But this point here now becomes 1, 2. Yep, my y values have doubled. What do we do now? So that's the dilation factor 2 from the x-axis followed by a translation of three units in the positive direction of the x-axis. Well, that's great. I don't have to worry about minuses because the question has actually told me. So I now know that here we go, here is my graph, building it up now, it's getting longer, because here we have my graph, this now is going to be 3,0, and this point here is going to be 4,2, why? Well, I've moved all of my x values three places that way, and so I add three places on to my origin, and three places onto that coordinate I've got, so 3, 0, and 2. Now obviously now we've got an issue here. We've got a crossing point that I'm going to need to be able to find. Now we can find this out because we know that the symmetry of this graph is awesome. So we could actually say, well, we know that this point here on the origin now was the point where x was originally negative 3, 0. And if I put minus 3 into my graph of uh, y equals x squared, that gives me 9. And then I'm going to double that to give me 18. So I now know that this point here is 0, 18. All I've done is say, well, I know that this point here is minus 3, 9. How do I know that? Because minus 3 squared is 9. When I then dilate it, the point here is going to be minus 3, 18, because my y values have doubled. And obviously, when I shift it over, that's then going to be my new y-intercept. So we've now done that three units in the positive direction of the x-axis. Now we want to move it four units in the negative direction of the y-axis. Now that's lovely, because that means we're going to move the whole thing down by four. So once again, making sure my graph looks relatively accurate. Now I've got to have this section below the graph. So what is it going to do? It's going to do something like... Now that looks, makes it look like it's crossing through the uh, origin and it shouldn't. So let's try that one again. So it's going to do something like that. Well, we now know that this point here must be 0, 14. We must know that this vertex here is actually going to be 3, negative 4 because we've moved the whole thing down by 4. And we would know that that 4, 2 is now here at, uh, sorry, we know that 4, 2, we know that 4, 2 is now going to be here at 4, minus 2. So we have some points. First things first is I'm going to write, first things first is I'm going to put some arrows on here. I'm going to move this up so that it's in frame. 
I'm going to put some arrows on there because we haven't limited my domain. And as a result, if we don't limit the domain of that graph, and we'll come back to that in a moment, we have to put the arrows to say that it's continuing on to infinity and beyond. Thank you very much, Buzz Lightyear. Now, obviously, we would then need to say, well, is this my final graph? It's pretty close. So I'm going to put a Y on there. I'm going to put an X on there. And I've got this issue here that I have these two crossing points. How am I going to find those crossing points? Well, bizarrely, you're going to need to know what the equation was. So even though we've done this, I'm still going to need to go back to the idea that once we've done all of the graphical stuff, that we've got two x minus 3 all squared minus 4. And how do I now find my crossing points where we know y equals 0? So I'm going to end up with 2 x minus 3 squared minus 4 is equal to 0. We're going to say that 2 lots of x minus 3 all squared is equal to 4. Divide both sides by 2 gives me x minus 3 all squared is equal to 2. Square root both sides gives me that x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. And so x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 2. So using that information, I would then write it onto my graph. This one here is going to be 3 plus root 2 comma 0. And this one here is going to be 3 minus root 2 comma 0. And lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, I have done it. My graph sketching, all the important pieces of information are on there. That looks complicated, doesn't it? It certainly does. Sometimes it's quicker, sometimes it isn't, sometimes shortcuts, sometimes not. But it's down to personal preference. Very rarely do uh, exam questions tell you the way in which you've got to do it. Now, I said at the start of the video, I was going to come back and tell you what happens when the order isn't done correctly. Now, when I say correctly, if the order isn't given in the question, you must, must, must follow Dr. T. All right, so it must be dilations first, then reflections, and then translations. So what I've done here, I've got a graph of the square root of x, and I have subjected it to uh, two transformations. One of them is a dilation of 2 from the x-axis, and one of them is a tra uh, translation 2 in the positive direction of the y-axis. So first things first, I'm going to dilate. So my red graph here is my original graph. I've dilated it, which means I've moved it two away from the x-axis. That's my purple graph. And then we've translated it. And translated it just then moves that whole graph up. And as we can see, the translation, sorry, the dilation kept it at its original point of zero, zero, and then moved the whole graph up by two. Obviously, now I'm going to do it in the other order. And so once again, my red graph here, you can already see they're different. The red graph here is my original graph. I'm going to translate it first. So automatically, that point has moved. My whole graph is shifted up by two automatically. Then I'm going to dilate it. Now that dilation doubles absolutely everything. So whereas before it just doubled my root x of graph, now it's doubling my root of x plus two. And we can see very clearly that the values are different. Now, if I squidge it in, although the shape of the curve is the same, we notice that this first graph here has a crossing point or a, a, a coordinate of 4, 6, but here, 4, 8. And as we go through the graph, it's all totally different. So just doing those in the wrong order has led to two very, very different graphs. And that's something that trips people up in exams all of the time. Ladies and gentlemen, I am done. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a video on combining transformation or combinations of transformations. It's been good to see you. Thank you so much for watching and for following. If you haven't already done so, can you do me a favor and spread the word? Sounds very needy, I know, but if you can, tell your friends to maybe uh, log onto my channel and subscribe and watch would be greatly appreciated. How are you going to subscribe? There is a doohickey for you there, which you can click. Thank you so much if you do. Otherwise, there's another video loading over there as well for you of a very similar nature. All right, it's been good. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.